Greetings and welcome to this playlist of introductory getting started videos for Radeon Pro Render for Autodesk and Vendor, which AMD have asked me to put together to help onboard the community with their new GPU ray tracer. Please note though, this software may receive significant development updates over time, which could change how it appears and behaves in the future, which could be different to what you see in this video. Okay, so this is the second video in the playlist. It's how to get your model out of Inventor into Pro Render, and then just getting used to the interface, navigating around some of the base uh, the first video in the playlist was how to download and then install Pro Renders. If you haven't done that yet, mate, go do that, get it installed, come back to this video, open Inventor, find yourself a model that you think to yourself, I'd quite like to see that as a nice looking render. Uh, do that. And then you can go to the tools menu in Inventor and then you should see a Radeon Pro Render collection of buttons. Now I'm using Inventor 2022 for the purposes of creating this video, but if you're using 2021, this is where we might start seeing some different things, mate. But because it is just a quick onboarding guide, just enough to get you going, I'm not going to be explaining everything and why things are different, but that's the start of things might being a little bit, a little bit different. But the button you do need to know about is this one here, Pro Render Viewer. Give that a click. That'll take your model out of Inventor, open up the main Pro Render interface, drops your model into that, and then we're good to go to begin building a render scene. And this is it, right? I'll take you through the basics. So this is the Pro Render window at the very top left. You've got the the main hamburger menu, as they call it, the little three lines. That's the application menu. So if you're working on a render and you want to, I don't know, carry it on the next day, you can go to save as. In the file format it uses is USD. It's not US dollars. We're not saving money. It's universal scene description. That's the graphics engine or the framework that this entire application is built upon. It's designed by Pixar Animation Studios. It's awesome heritage behind uh, ProRender. But that's the file format, USD. Save it out as a USD file, and then later on, you can reopen that USD file and carry on where you left off. So that's, yeah, the rest of the menu is pretty self-explanatory. You've got sort of undo, redo, delete. So you've got some tools here at the top, very small toolbar. The one you find yourself using the most is the selection tool, which is just object selection. Uh, you've got edit tools, and we'll cover, again, we'll cover most of those later on in the playlist. Environments along the top, edit environment, materials environment, lighting, and render. As you're jumping through the environments, you'll see the interface changes. So the panels around the interface are context sensitive. So yeah, they'll just populate with data based on whichever environment you're in. The panels as well, you can grab the grips, move them around. So if you find you want more or less visual real estate, you can move those around based on the size of the monitor that you've got and what you do or don't need to see. Around the viewport itself though, you do have some camera tools. By default, jump into ProRender replicating Inventor's orthographic camera, which is what we're looking through right now. So it's a camera that doesn't really give you any gauge of distance and depth. That's the orthographic camera, and they call it Inventor Viewport Camera. You can change that, though, and go into the perspective camera. This puts perspective on the camera, but you can't modify that perspective. It's just, it's just what it is. It's just what you're given. In terms of navigating around, though, and orbiting and moving around... Grab your mouse, scroll the middle wheel, up and down, zoom in, zoom out. That's pretty standard. That's self-explanatory as it is for most CAD applications, especially Autodesk ones. Scroll the middle wheel, zoom in, zoom out. For pan, press down the middle wheel, give it a click. The cursor will change to a little pan hand, and then that is pan around. This works with both perspective and the Inventor viewport camera. So zoom in, zoom out, press the middle wheel, and then you've got your pan. For the, the all-important 3D orbit, it's shift. Hold down shift, press the middle wheel, and then there's your orbit. And then you just combine those, and then you've got everything you need to use. You've got some quality options here. Uh, you've got full mode, which is what we're using at the moment. Full mode is the ray tracer. This is it. This is the full ray traced preview that you would essentially get if you were to output this to a file, for all intents and purposes anyway. And then you've got full wireframe, solid color, ambient occlusion, texture. The ones that I tend to find I use the most whilst I've got the Pro Render Viewer window open are full and solid color. Now solid color changes it over to a monochrome mode, but it disables ray tracing and it kind of gives your PC a bit of a break. Okay, I don't know what your PC is like, but if it's quite a powerful PC, you might find it a bit noisy whilst you're in ray tracing full mode. So yeah, it, but you can't ignore the fact that it also disables all the colors and it turns it to monochrome. I haven't investigated this yet, but I'm assuming that the material types that they use in ProRender only activate when ray tracing is enabled. So it's only monochrome, but it gives your PC a rest and 
I don't know, maybe you can do what you need to do whilst it's in this mode, but that's solid color. So I find myself using that and full mode the most. Okay, there's one last thing that you probably need to know about, and this is only useful if you're using Inventor 2022, and that is the dynamic link. So whilst this is open, Inventor is always still open in the background because it just launched the render viewer separately. So you can change the model from Inventor dynamically, and what you've got in ProRender will update automatically. So say, for example, this bar here running along the front of the trailer is this bar here. Now, if I was to just delete that from Inventor, click Save, uh, in fact, it's gone already. <laughs> I haven't even actually saved it yet. And it was gone pretty much straight away. But that's the dynamic link between Inventor and ProRender. Uh, this bit here, just delete. There, gone. So that's that dynamic link in action. Yeah, that's quite handy, but it's only active in Inventor 2022. You don't get that in Inventor 2021. But that's just enough to get you going, get you started. In the remaining videos in the playlist, we'll be taking a close look at how to assign materials, how to manipulate the lighting, and then how to output uh, renders to a file. Thank you very much for watching, and enjoy Radeon ProRender for Desk Inventor.